Now we will look at electrolysis of aqueous ionic compounds using inert electrodes. Inert electrodes, in your syllabus usually you will encounter graphite electrodes or platinum electrodes. So, you start off with the first example, electrolysis of aqueous dilute copper 2 sulfate. We will again assign the terminals of the battery and the electrodes first, the negative end of the battery is connected to the negative electrode positive end connected to the positive electrode if you want a detailed discussion on how we assign the electrodes and the terminals you can refer to an earlier video after assigning the terminals and the electrodes we will figure out the ions that are present in the electrolyte here we have copper sulfate so for convenience I will put the positive ion next to the negative terminal right copper 2 plus sulfate ion negatively charged I'll put it at a positive terminal now the issue is it is in aqueous state so there is water present and water itself when it dissociates it contributes ions also the H plus and OH minus so besides these two ions from copper sulfate we also have hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions from water okay, again I put the positive charges together and the negative charges together so here we have to decide let's start with the cathode here this is the cathode now we have two ions that is waiting to be discharged the copper ions and the hydrogen ions who will be discharged first or who will be preferentially discharged we will use a little table to help us make the decision now this table is related to your metals reactivity series ions that comes from more reactive metal will be very difficult to discharge ions that comes from less reactive metals will be easier to discharge it is easy to reason out because if they come from reactive metals they will prefer to remain in ion form it is difficult for them to accept the electrons and go back to the metallic form whereas if the ions come from less reactive metals the less reactive metals are reluctant to form ions in the first place so it's easier to encourage them to accept an electron and revert back to their element state so we have calcium to silver a little representation of some of the selected metals what is important is the position of hydrogen okay, hydrogen ions is above copper and below lead so in this case we have copper and hydrogen we can see that it's easier to discharge copper compared to discharging hydrogen so the one that undergoes reduction at the cathode site will be your copper ion it goes into or it forms a copper metallic copper okay, to do that it will need to gain two electrons now let's look at the anode at the anode we have two competing anions hydroxides and sulfates so we use a table right. within your syllabus you have to take note especially when halides are involved chlorides bromides and iodides right. under dilute conditions your hydroxides will be discharged ahead of halides but when they are concentrated concentrated chlorides bromides iodides then the chloride bromides and iodides will be discharged ahead of hydroxides under concentrated conditions for sulfates and nitrates the easy part is that they will not be discharged in other words hydroxides will always be discharged ahead of sulfates and nitrates so in this case we have sulfates versus hydroxides 
since sulfates will not be discharged, it will be the hydroxides that will be discharged preferentially. So we have hydroxides discharged. They will be oxidized to form oxygen gas. Okay. The balancing of equations, it might be useful for you to memorize the ratio. We will have water. Two, and we have 4 here. So this balances the equation and to balance the charge we have 4 minus on this side it means it has to lose 4 electrons okay, or it means that 4 electrons are involved we will balance out by putting 4 negative charge on this side it loses 4 electrons so this is the half equations for the discharge of hydroxide ions it will be useful if you can memorize this half equation. So, this is the half equation for the cathode, half equation for the anode. Now, are there other observations we can make using this setup? You can use, use, you can use the half equations, or for me, I will prefer to base it on the diagram. Now, talking about the cathode, what observations can we make? I can see that at the cathode, a, a reddish brown deposit of copper is formed. Okay. This is for the cathode. What happens at the anode? We will see the product of oxygen gas, or in other words, we can see effervescence, and the gas will relight a glowing splint. So we can discuss observations in terms of the products that form at the cathode and at the anode. What can we say about changes in the electrolyte itself? I know that we are removing copper ions or we are reducing the amount of copper ions since they are being discharged. What is the visual impact of this? Copper ions will contribute to a blue solution. So the lesser copper ions we have, the blue color solution actually fades or becomes lighter. At the anode side, we are removing hydroxide. So we can discuss in terms of acidity. Since we are removing hydroxide ions, it becomes more acidic the pH decreases for the electrolyte. 